Now, as I said before, for the longest time, only Jeremy Boring and Andrew Clavin. And Jeremy Boring doesn't have, actually have a show, so it's really Andrew Clavin was the only host who talked about Candace. But everyone knows that Ben Shapiro was the one behind all of this, and so he couldn't escape it forever. And so when he got into an interview with Piers Morgan, he was asked the question. One of the consequences of this war has been a lot of very high passions on both sides, a lot of angry disagreements. You and your company have been at the centre of a very uh, high profile one at the moment with Candace Owens, who's now left Daily Wire. Um, was she fired or did she leave of her own volition? I'm not going to speak to this topic, Pierce. At, at all? At all. You can't give me any uh, insight into why she departed? No hints, no nothing. I'm not going to speak to this. Oh, well, for a guy who talks for a living, you sure seem awfully quiet now, Ben. What's going on, bro? C can, I ask, can I ask why? I mean, you can ask. No, no, I'm not. You can ask why you don't want to say anything. Um, again, you can ask. <laughs> look at the smug look. You see, he knows that everybody is talking about the unwritten rule in conservative media now. And like the first rule of Fight Club, you're not supposed to talk about Fight Club. And you're not supposed to acknowledge that there even is an unwritten rule. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I mean, I only, I'm only curious because I know what a, a staunch defender of free speech you are. <laughs> and it would surprise me if it had been someone's opinions that would make you want to part Ooh. company with them. Ooh. However, contentious. I mean, su suffice it to say, the only thing I will say is what I've said all along with regard to Candace or with regard to any of our other hosts. I am not in hiring and firing position with The Daily Wire. I'm a co-founder of The Daily Wire. I'm a co-owner of The Daily Wire. I'm not actually in management. Technically, I don't have the power to fire her, so I told Jeremy Boring to fire her, and so you can't blame me for firing her. So notice how he doesn't actually deny any of the allegations, and he doesn't address anything Pierce said. He says, oh, well, I am not in the position to hire or fire her. Okay, but you can just tell someone else to do it. Just because you didn't directly fire her doesn't mean that you weren't involved in the process. Because again, the fact that you were completely unwilling to say anything... You're literally smirking because you know that you were involved in her getting out of there. Like this, this is just such slimy behavior. I think that's the word I've been looking for. This guy's just so slimy. And so, you know, he thought he could get away with it. But then he went on the sh show of his friend, Dave Rubin. Keep in mind, Dave Rubin's Jewish. David Rubin is signed with him, but even Dave Rubin eventually brought up the topic again. All right, so let's do the elephant in the room for just a moment, because I saw you this week on Piers Morgan. He asked you repeatedly about Candace. Uh, you repeatedly basically said, I you, won't talk about don't that. Yeah, talk I don't want to talk about that it. here too. I, I, yeah, <laughs> and that's fine. And, and, you know, it's interesting because we all sort of came up together to different extents and we've all done a million things together in public events and networks and all of those things. It seems to me that at this moment, She's now a free agent. She happened to end up on Locals, where, which I created, and we they were a platform, not a publisher that you guys are. Can you at least talk to just sort of just sort of where it's at now? She's not with you. She's free. She's and, free to do and, whatever she wants to do, to be wherever she wants to be. Does it surprise you that so many people, even on our side of this, are confused about that as it relates to free speech and quote unquote cancel culture? Like severing a business tie, as long as you're not throwing someone in jail, they're able to be everywhere else is not. Uh, I'm not super surprised at the controversy, yeah. honestly, because which, I, I which don't think just that's makes true. no sense at a business level beyond beyond free speech. I mean, there's a reason that networks exist. It, it right, they have, editor they have editorial yeah. positions. Yeah. Daily Wire has a very strong editorial position on a wide variety of, of issues. And by the way, I should say that, you know, there are a lot of people who are suggesting this is about disagreements over Israel. I mean, I can safely say it is not about disagreements over Israel to the extent that, you know, you know the, the notion that you have to mirror my exact perspectives on, on what Israel is doing in Gaza is obviously not true based on the roster of hosts that we, that we currently have. There are a lot of other factors, obviously. See, the problem here, though, is that Ben Shapiro is just straight up lying. Of course, it was about Israel. The moment she starts criticizing Israel, he gets triggered at her, and that's, you know, four months ago. And then when she keeps doing it, when she keeps fighting with major Jewish leaders, they fire her. And again, one day after the ADL tweets about it, she's gone. She's out of the company. So to say this is not about Israel is completely ridiculous. Again, the fact that he even here is still unwilling to address it. 
And, you know, his friend there, Dave Rubin's like, oh, well, yeah, you fired her, but she isn't going to jail. Okay, that's still cancel culture. Cancel culture is not about going to jail, right? Because then at that point, it's not about canceling. It's about literally, you know, using the state to enforce your will, at, at which point it's much more serious than canceling. So that's a very silly, stupid take from him. Um, but, you know, he's like, oh, I'm so surprised people are, are accusing you of, you know, cancel culture and all that. Well, again, remember, this was the free speech, you know, sort of public publication area, right? Jeremy Boring was like, you know what, we will not fire her because we believe in free speech. And yet that is exactly what he did. And again, this guy, right, uh, Ben Shapiro, his whole thing is about facts, don't care about your feelings. His feelings get hurt and he immediately gets her fired. So this guy, again, very slimy and is sort of outing himself. But of course, he's unwilling to immediately say it. So in case you guys still don't think Ben Shapiro is kind of a scumbag and a slimy, let's learn a little bit about some of his unsafe reactions and statements in the past. Conservative who was propped up by corporate interests to be the phony king of conservative media when he literally supports same-sex marriage. Oh, you don't believe me? Well, you must be new around here because I always have the receipts. Like this tweet he posted back in 2020, fairly recently actually, I mean, he was already a huge star back then, where somebody accused him of not supporting same-sex marriage and he snapped back replying i've been libertarian on same-sex marriage for years before obergefell but you couldn't be bothered to google i mean i don't need to spell this out to you do i libertarian means he doesn't care obergefell is the legal case that went to the supreme court that mandated that christians automatically start changing the definition of marriage which i refuse to do you want to see another interesting receipt something else that you'll only see here on my youtube channel because I broke this story years ago, but in case you missed it, here it is again. This is how much money the Daily Wire has spent boosting Ben Shapiro's Facebook posts over the last seven years. So when you have a public page, like any public figure, and they post anything, it automatically shadow bans that post. It severely limits the distribution. And then there's a little button next to the post that says, oh, boost this post. And then you pay, you know, hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of dollars for one post to then be distributed to everybody who is following a page. So sort of a way, it's a big moneymaker for Facebook. And so after the 2016 election, Facebook made it their policy to be transparent about who is paying what to boost posts on Facebook. And so if you know where to look, you can see that Daily Wire has spent $8.5 million to boost Ben Shapiro's posts thus making him the most popular, most viral conservative on Facebook because it's artificial. They paid for it. Now, you might think, all right, it's over. Candace has been fired. The people who fired her are unwilling to say anything. She hasn't really said anything. You think it's over. But no, even as she's still not affiliated with them, they still feel the need to go and attack her. So what could she have possibly done now? Well, she said Christ is king, which apparently is unacceptable, even though that is a basic Christian belief. So here is her tweet. She said, the reason why some people believe that with enough assist insistence, they can convince American Christians that the basic truth, Christ is king, is actually anti-Semitic, is because they have been successfully spiking the ball on Christianity for the past 60 years. Inch by inch, by pretending to be our friends and making us fearful of having the media project us as overzealous, is that how they have scored so many wins. It's how mocking Christ has become a commonplace in Hollywood. The reality is that they accuse us of what they are guilty of. They hold contempt for Christianity. The reality is that Christ consciousness is rising throughout the world, and any person who is attempting to use methods of psychology to make people pause before they possess, profess their faith is not on the side of goodness. And, yep, this couldn't summarize things more perfectly. Of course, when she says some people, we, we, we know who those some people are. Um, but, yeah, she's completely correct. Uh, they have, you know, been trying to make us feel ashamed of our faith. 
you know, trying to say that, you know, get the media to be like, oh, look at these extremists. But again, they are in the media too. So, you know, sort of makes sense. And again, completely correct. Pretending to be our friends, but actually not being our friends, undermining us behind our backs. Now, the only problem I have with this tweet is she's talking about Christ consciousness, which, you know, sounds new agey and cringe. But honestly, the rest of it is pretty fine. So anyways, after she said this, the thing of Christ is King started becoming fairly widespread and fairly common. And so she also tweeted this, Christ is King, every knee will bow. Uh, and so that was pretty recent. And again, makes sense. Then some other people started using this for bad purposes. So we mentioned Nick Fuentes before. And Nick Fuentes basically started using Christ as King as a way to insult Jews. Now, in the end, does that make the phrase Christ as King anti-Semitic? No. I mean, you know, you could turn any sentence and, you know, use it as some sort of attack against Jews. But that doesn't make the sentence itself anti-Semitic. And, you know, there are clearly some bad actors. You have people like Andrew Tate. Uh, who says, as a Muslim, it warms my heart to see the resurgence of spirited Christian declarations, Christ is King, and I pray Christianity regains its strength and protects the societies against the pervasive and constant erosion of morality by the devotees of Satan. If you accept everything, you stand for nothing. Now, I would agree with the statement, but again, this guy is Muslim. And it is interesting how few Muslims objected to this post. So you might ask, why would Muslims not care that Andrew Tate just declared Christ as king? Well, the reason is because he was using it in the way Nick Fuentes was, which is basically a way to attack Jewish people. And so when you see people like Andrew Tate and Sneeko and just Muslims in general or, you know, other non-Christians using it, you know that it's not, in, uh, you know, it's, it's not being used in a very genuine way. But that said, though, it is Holy Week this week, and so to say that we're not allowed to say that phrase because a couple of bad actors like Andrew Tate and Nick Fuentes use that is ridiculous. And so, no, we are not going to say that Christ is King is anti-Semitic. But, of course, Jeremy Boring had to chime in, and this is what he had to say. The bizarre can of worms that the Daily Wire opened this week is the CEO, Jeremy Boring, declaring that... Saying Christ is king can be construed as anti-Semitic, which is interesting timing because this is Holy Week. Sunday is Easter. How is saying Christ is king anti-Semitic, he asks? The same way anything becomes anti-Semitic when it is used for the purpose of expressing anti-Semitism. But I guess, is it... Is it considered anti-Semitism if you are saying it specifically because this is someone who is Jewish who does not believe in Christ? In other words, is it anti-Semitic if you happen to mention it to somebody who's Jewish? Well, in what context? If I have a conversation with Ben Shapiro about the divinity of Christ, I might make an argument that Matthew as a gospel tends to elevate the position of Christ as king, whereas, say, the book of John might elevate Christ uh, and his divinity. That's a perfectly reasonable thing to have a conversation with a Jewish person about. Uh, but if I don't like a Jewish person, I don't like something that they say, and I say, Christ is king, I might as well add uh, comma sucker exclamation point after it, then yeah, of course I'm doing something that's reprehensible, and I shouldn't use the name of God in that way. That's very interesting. I mean, what's next? Are certain people going to start claiming that a cross is anti-Semitic? <laughs> oh, wait, what's this? It's an article in the London Guardian. Christians must understand that for Jews, the cross is a symbol of oppression. Come Again, you know, what we must understand is a lot of these people, they don't actually care about if it's anti-Semitic or not. They just want to shut down your speech and they will use anti-Semitism as a proxy for that by claiming to be victims of things that they are not really victims of. And so, yes, Christ is king. Now, it is interesting because one of the Daily Wire hosts... Andrew Clavin was also saying that Christ is king, but he spun it in a very strange way. Take a look. Okay. Really, this hatred of Jews, this level of hatred of Jews, is a hatred of God, a hatred of Christ. It's a hatred of Jesus Christ. I know they say, oh, no, it's because the Jews, you know, Nick Fuentes, he says, the Jews' religion is based on rejecting Christ. That's crap. <laughs> the Jews were around for a long time before they were prepared to bring 
Christ into the world. That is not so I'm going to play the rest of the clip, but at this point, he said, Candace Owens' stance is a, is a hatred for Christ. This is what, this is what, hey, y'all tell me if I'm hearing something different. And no disrespect to my man here. What are you even saying? How is it disrespect? How is it hatred of Jesus Christ if Candace is, according to some of them, if she's off on her thoughts on Israel, she's taking the wrong stance? What does that have to do with hating Jesus Christ? not what defines the Jewish religion. When I, who have given my life to Christ, who have bowed to Christ as I have bowed to nothing else on this planet, who bends the knee before Christ the King, and I come on this outlet, which I was at from the very beginning, which I helped to build, this outlet that I love, I, I admit it, I love this place, and I know that such things are being said under the aegis of the Daily Wire. It has to end. It has to stop. If Candace wants to say those things about the Jews, about Hitler, no matter how she dodges and weaves, she has to leave the Daily Wire. She has to leave for one reason above every other. There are lots of uh, reasons, but the one reason she has to leave above every other is because Christ is king. We cannot let him be defamed, even if they call him the Jews. We cannot let Christ be defamed at this place because Christ is king. So to finish off the video, when people say that it's total nonsense that Israel is influencing our government, that these people are running our government, that they are controlling our politicians, all of this is ridiculous and that we are in no way controlled by them and that all of this is completely voluntary, take a look at these clips and tell me if you think that this is a normal thing that the US government prioritizes the citizens and the protection of another country literally over their own. And in case you think I'm exaggerating, here is Nancy Pelosi, who again is one of the most important politicians in the United States, clearly explaining how this foreign country basically owns the U.S. government. Because, again, people say, oh, that's some conspiracy theory. Oh, it's a trope. But again, this video literally proves it. And if people want this so-called trope to disappear, well, then they need to stop confirming it all the time because it's more and more obvious and it's harder to hide every single day. And so I will end with this. Bring it down. I have said to people when they ask me if this capital crumbled to the ground, the one thing that would remain is our commitment to our aid, and I don't even call it aid, our cooperation with Israel. That's fundamental to who we, fundamental. It doesn't matter if America is completely bankrupt, the government will still find a way to give money to Ben Shapiro's favorite foreign country. <laughs> what say you, Ben? They say that I want America to fight wars for Israel. Nope. Nope. First of all, Israel can take care of herself. A few moments later. If Israel is forced to the wall, the possibility of nuclear exchange is extremely high. That is why it is very important that the United States provide the material aid to Israel and that they also dissuade Hezbollah from getting in. And so there you go. I hope by the end of this video that you figured out why Kenneth Sons got really, really got fired. Essentially, she flew too close to the sun, and suffered the consequences. She started making the link that a lot of people are making these days, which is that the U.S. government is being way too influenced by a foreign country to the point where they prioritize this country over their own country. That the people who live in this country use their potential but usually fake victimhood to silence others from criticizing them and criticizing their actions. But you know what? As she said, we're waking up to this. It's harder and harder to hide. After all, facts don't care about your feelings until you offend the feelings of Ben Shapiro and his people. And so I will end off the video with this quote from Dave Chappelle which perfectly summarizes things. If, if they're black, then it's a gang. 
If they're Italian, it's a mob, but if they're Jewish, it's a coincidence, and he should never speak about it. <laughs>